Hello everybody, Steffi here from The Makers. Welcome to our live stream today um, for making a cute little hoglet. Um, this is all made from wool, no wire, no um, glue in eyes, nothing, just wool. And it's in two parts. So today I'm going to make um, mostly the head and the ears and the body. And then I'm going to show you how to make a leg and a hand, which if you're making along, this will be your homework. And the next time we are finishing off the hands and legs and attaching them, and then we're making these little um, prickly, well, they're not prickly, they're actually very soft um, little spikes on the hedgehog. And that's a particular technique, which I will show you. Sorry, I'm holding onto his nose. He probably doesn't like that very much. But he's, he's super cute, um, really lovely, especially if you're watching this live, you will know that this week is Hedgehog Awareness Week. So we're going to be talking lots about hedgehogs, which leads me straight away. If you're watching this live today, which is the 3rd of May, or you're watching this again in two days time, which is the 5th of May on Facebook at 7 p.m. on our Facebook page, then you can enter our competition. And we have got, a, um, as usual, we have the two £15 gift vouchers that we are um, um, giving away to two lucky uh, viewers. And the um, question, I can't find it now, here we go. The question that we would like you to, to answer is, have you seen a hedgehog yet? Um, if you have, tell us about your encounter. Um, so please, yes, tell us if you've seen a hedgehog. Maybe you have a hedgehog story. Um, we'd love to hear a hedgehog story from you. And um, especially if you have seen one this year already, because they're just about waking up and snuffling and uh, uh, around the gardens and um, getting nice and fat and round after their winter sleep. So, yes, please tell us about your hedgehog encounters. And um, um, I'm just going to say hello to a few people here. We have got, got Gabriella from the Czech Republic. Hello. Um, Diane is there. Jane is there. Um, Sandra. Um, Alison. Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Hope Daniel is all right. Um, Sylvia is there. Um, oh, oh. Um, Ashley, uh, no, I said Ashley already. Catherine, hi, Catherine. Elaine, um, another, did I mention one Jane already? Um, another, yes, another, uh, spelled differently, another Jane. Marion is there. Vampire Venom, um, hi, all. I will have to, uh, I will have to have you in my pocket to begin with. <laughs> <laughs> never been in anyone's pocket got some manual work to do but hopefully not going to take too long well hello there from your pocket uh carolyn is there um laura is there uh donna helen hello helen haven't seen you in a while susan all the way from um the big pond over the big pond in massachusetts Carol is there, also across the big pond, but not so big and not so far away, and that is an island. Um, we've got Lorna here, Melanie, Rose, Karen, Julie, of course, from the other end of uh, the country in northeast Scotland to us. And then uh, Lily is there. I'm pretty certain Lily is also from uh, the United States. So welcome, everybody, uh, to join us here today to make the little hoglet. Now, if you've got the Making Needle Felted Animals book, you may have seen the project is in there. So I'm going to uh, use that as my base. However, as it so often happens with um, needle felting and with me too, and with you guys as well, we all progress. So we all learn new things and we all make things slightly differently. So I'm probably gonna vary it a little bit, but I don't I don't think it's too far off, to be honest. I made one yesterday and um, I, I surprised myself that uh, this book is still up to date. So you can definitely make one from the book. Um, and if you um, are watching now, you can make one along as well. And as I said, we are having part one and part two, part two being next Tuesday at one o'clock. So um, I've got a, a candle lit because um, still in um, memory of my dad who sadly died two days ago. So I, I thought until until the funeral when everything's um, sorted, I'm going to keep a light on for him. And um, and if you are thinking of a loved one, then maybe that's a nice uh, gesture for you to look at as well. 
Um, so basically, I'm, I've got, gone a bit sort of um, random with my colours and wools that I've got here. But in the book, um, it tells you what you need. And um, you need 10 grams of natural, nearly black or dark brown short fibre wool tops. Now, I am using the Portuguese Merino here because it's uh, perfect for this project. Then 10 gram Shetland humbug. Um, well, the humbug basically is a, is a stripy wool, but we don't, um, the makers don't sell it. So I'm going to show you, not today, but tomorrow, how you can make up your own variety. We've also got some Jacob's stripe tops, which you can buy from our website, which is perfectly fine as well. But I'm going to show you tomorrow how to mix these tops to make them into a stripy top for the spiky, soft spiky cover on this particular little um, hoglet. And then um, 10 grams of white Shetland um, or Scudden. Now, Scudden we don't do anymore at all. Shetland, um, I've replaced it with Lanolin Rich Corwood because I love it. So um, there you go. And then um, um, Flesh Pink, which is um, our uh, New Zealand Merino. And then five gram each of black and beige wool. You don't actually need that much. Um, so the black's just got muddled up with my... Where's the black one? Oh. Oh, well, I, I just grab a bit from here. I've got some floating around. You don't need five grams. It's actually way too much. And a little bit of beige um, because um, the beige will make it slightly dirty looking and the black is for the nose and the eyes. Now I've lost the page. Um, by the way, it's on page um, 98. And then all you need is a medium felting needle. Um, it says a small foam mat, but of course we don't do foam mats anymore. Eco wool mat or our earth friendly felting mat. And you will need scissors. Be uh, not today you won't need it, but um, next time you will need scissors. So as I'm following in the book, I thought I should put right what's written in there. The book is after all seven years old. So we've moved on. We're certainly not using the, um, the uh, foam mat anymore. So the first thing I'm going to do, grab my wool mat here, a nice small size here, don't need it any bigger, and I'm going to show you now how to make the outer shell for the hedgehog. It's a little bit um, tricky, so it'll be a good tutorial to watch how to make a rounded um, outer, because it's it's basically making a 3D shape, um, but, but basically it's quite hard to do that because it's going to be hollow. So I'm going to show you that first. Let's um, have a look. So I've got, I'm, I'm, I think it's a great uh, stash buster, this a little project. So um, I've used bits and pieces I've got of this, um, of the um, um, Portuguese Merino. The reason why I like it is because it is really short fibered and therefore I'm going to put him here so he, you can see what I'm actually making. Um, so therefore it felts down really easily into um, a flat shape and or entangles up quite well. So I'm going to, I'm sort of aiming for about 10 by 10 centimeter, like a, a, a round, not, not, not 10 by 10, but about 10 centimeter in diameter. And I'm using a, a medium felting needle. And all I'm doing initially, I'm just stabbing it flat on my mat. Um, I'm going to change that use that medium felting needle that's a bit more grippy um, you will find your favorite tools and um, on that subject I must tell you now that as of today we have a special offer on I'm just going to uh, put the little uh, screen up so you can all see it um, we have got a tool and wools promotion, which means that you get three for two. This is a great opportunity to stock up on tools and um, on different fibers and wools. So you basically uh, put all three in a basket um, online, of course, at www.themakers with two s's.co.uk, and then you um, it automatically will give you the lowest priced item for free, and um, that promotion will only stay live from the 3rd of um, May to the 9th of May and that is in 2022 so if you're watching this anytime in the future no doubt we will have something else um, on but not this particular one so make use of that whilst you can um, it, if you ever wanted to get a nice um, earth um, friendly felting mat or if you uh, want to uh, stock up on some needles maybe you've got your eye on one or the other wool fiber that you've always wanted and um, and this is your opportunity so I'm I'm now making this disc so I haven't stopped while I've been oops, but while I've been talking I'm going to go to the overview camera again and I'm just f felting this flat now so I'm staying away from the edge because what I'm going to do in a minute I'm going to turn the edge inward 
when you felt flat on your mat, you all know this already, but you have to lift your work off quite regularly because you are actually fastening it onto the mat. Whilst it's felting in itself as well, you're also um, fastening it onto the mat. So just peel it off now and then. And I'm keeping away from the edge by about maybe sort of a centimeter or something like that. Because what I'm going to do next is I'm going to fold the edge in so I've got a nice neat edge now and felt the rest still down. Um, talking about tools, you can certainly use your um, three needle felting tool, whether that is the blue one or the clover one, which is pink, which is um, the three needle, um, I think it's called a felting pen. Um, it will speed your work up. There you go. Let's go make it go faster. It's an, a great opportunity, as I say, make use of our promotion at the moment stock up on tools and stock up on worlds um, and get by put three in your basket and you get the third which is the lowest priced one for free so now i've got um, a little uh, flat disc here and now the challenge is to make that into um, a round shape like a bowl so to speak now um I'm going to show you how to do that and I'm folding the edge up a little bit and then I'm sort of um, stabbing, can you see, I'm stabbing into, into the inner part of that edge whilst it's pointing up. Now I can't, I can't do that all around but at some point I've got to also felt the, the, bit, the bits that are next to each other together because otherwise uh, it's not going to uh, make a smaller circumference. So I'm, I'm going all the way around it and I'm f pushing it up so that it makes a, um, a, like an edge. And then I've also got to felt these edges together at some point and I'm, f I'm leaning them in towards the middle, but I'm not actually felting them flat onto the disc. I'm actually just felting them together so that they become more of a, um, of a, of a sort of a, a round shape. And I keep doing that all the way around and keep repeating that until I've got more of a um, bowl shape than I had before. You have to mind your fingers because in effect you are sort of stabbing in towards your fingers there. Um, if if you are really struggling to get this to be a nice, um, it's not never going to be like a bowl, it's probably more going to be like a plate with a, with a, with a little edge on the outside. Um, so don't worry too much about it because you can also shape it quite a lot once you start adding the details of the hoglet into it. Did you know that hoglet is um, the legitimate way to call baby hedgehogs? So yes. And um, do you know how, does anybody know what lots and lots of hoglets are called? So a whole group of hoglets. Um, of a whole group of hedgehogs, I should say. Does anybody know that? I think that's the um, that's so sweet as well. I'll I'll let I'll have you let a, a little think about it. Maybe we can get some guesses. Um, I do know the answer, so I will um I will tell you and wonder if anybody gets that right. And I will check into the chat in a minute. Um, so let's have a look, and I can also show you where my my um ever so slightly curved shape is going here. So you can see it's become a little bit of a dish shape there. And um, and that that is going to be the 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 outer of the hedgehog. But um, let's have a look what, what hedgehog stories people have to tell. Okay, here we go. Um, so, uh, ah, so Lily comes from Long Island. Um, I knew, I knew it, I knew it, New York. Um, Elaine says, yes, had a little hedgehog that lived in my back garden of my old house for several years. Nice. Diana says, hello, everyone. Hi, Diana. I haven't said hello to you again. Um, oh, <laughs> she says she's in the car, so she can't hear me, but she's not driving, which begs the question, what are you doing? What's the point? I'm sure she will enlighten us in a minute. Um, hi, Gina. Uh, Marion says, I've seen quite a few, but most recently on my way home in the dark and it was crossing the road into our cul-de-sac. I managed to slow down and wait for him or her to cross. Thank God for that. Um, yes, see, mostly hedgehogs lying by the side of the road. Um, Ashley says she loves the big ears. I do hope that those are the hoglet's big ears and not mine, but I'm sure you're referring to the hoglet. <laughs> 
Um, Sandra says, had hedgehogs at my old house and used to feed them and had houses in the garden for them. Not sure if I'll get any at my new house. Well, I um, you can put food out, obviously, to attract them, but that might also attract other creatures such as foxes and maybe rats. Um, so yes, it's always a um, maybe maybe the stray cats and um, that are or ne the neighbors' cats. Um, anyway, uh, I always remember seeing a badger and a hedgehog fighting and boy the hedgehog was having a real go at the badger I think the badger underestimated the hedgehog says julie wow i've never seen that before i mean badgers are quite vicious as well but um i guess the hedgehog has got the spikes as an advantage it can just curl up in a little ball um donna says it it's early in the u.s great way to start tuesday well good morning um ashley says usually have a couple visit our garden have to check when i let the dog out are you are you worried about the dog doing anything to the hedgehogs? Because I always thought that they curl up in a ball and they're sort of pretty dog proof. Uh, Laura says I've not seen a European hedgehog this year, but I have seen a tenrec. Tenrecs look like hedgehogs, but are genetically unrelated. They are closer related to the elephant than the hedgehog. Laura, you live in the UK, don't you? I've never seen a tenrec. What's a tenrec? I've got to Google that later. Um, that's amazing. A tenrec. Is this is this like a, a pet hedgehog at home or are you talking about one in the wild? I need to know this now. Alison says, let the dog out last week at night and there was a really big hedgehog snuffing around. Found out my neighbour feeds them. Catherine says, um, it's it's no more May. You should be saving grass cuttings, cutting to let the flowers grow for the pollinators. Thank you for mentioning that. I saw that the other day, no more May, which um, is perfect because we all hate mowing the grass. So we've got a perfect excuse to not mow it. Um, yeah, we're not very British in that way in our household. Uh, we like long grass, um, mostly because we don't like mowing it. Right. I want to tell you that we have actually got quite a lot of hedgehog uh, products in our repertoire at the Makers. And I'm going to show you what specifically. You probably know of the um, three little hedgehogs that you can see right now under the Makers logo, which um, they're three sizes, small, medium and large. And they use the um, hedgehog mohair fabric um, so that you can make a very realistic, realistic looking hedgehog. Uh, we sell all three of them. Um, the the, the medium and the large come as a pack only, so you would need to use your own tools and the little one uh, comes as a kit as well. <clears throat> Do you remember the Mac, Mac Hoggies? We've, we've had it as an advent project and maybe not right this very minute, but it will be up as a, uh, as a downloadable PDF on our um, website shortly. So if you wanted to make one of those characters, you can. Um, they're quite easy to make. Um, they're poseable. And again, you use a little bit of the hedgehog fabric in different sizes for the different characters. Um, of course, we've got the little hoplet on there that we're making today, which you will find in the uh, Making Needle Felted Animals book. We do have a curly hedgehog as well, which is a free tutorial on our website, uh, on our YouTube channel here as well. And we sell a hedgehog um, pack, which again hasn't got tools, but you can make the little fella um, just from the materials there. And then we have had a, a curled up hedgehog with... Um, with uh, the hedgehog mohair fabric as well. I do believe these are out of stock at the moment, um, but again, uh, the instructions, you, if you want to make this, should be available online. Okay, right, I'm going back to my, um, my little bowl shape here, and I'm gonna try and work that a little bit more now. So you can sort of stand it on its side as well, once you've got that ledge going here. And as I say, don't worry too much if it doesn't, if it won't hold your bowl of soup, it's fine. We're just trying to um, make it slightly curved rather than um, making a proper, proper round shape out of it. It's quite hard to do that um, when you're needle felting. It's much easier to do this wet felting when you put a resist in it. Not that I know anything about wet felting and to more to the point, I tried it and I'm not actually, um, I'm not that keen on it, I will be honest. So, um, yes, so I'm doing my best just making it um, a little bit rounder than it has been. And now um, I'm going to have to look at the instructions, otherwise I'll make up my own version, my second own version, because the next thing we're do going to do is um, fold the edges to create an oblong bowl, line the bowl with, an, with, the, um, with 
at the most half of the white wool about five millimeter thick so this is uh, this would be my um, lanolin rich core wool which I'm now going to put inside and co color it in so to speak so I'm lining it now I'm just stabbing it trying not to lose my bowl shape so just adding that wool inside there I have a feeling this hedgehog might be a little bit smaller than the one that I've made but that's okay so another opportunity to keep that nice round shape sometimes it also works if you are literally stabbing it from that end then stabbing it from that end then stabbing it from that end that also allows you to sort of got, get more of a bowl shape going so it's slightly rounder so it's it's actually now not standing not sitting straight on its um on its back anymore now we are going to do a lot of stabbing inside that shape so inevitably the back will become slightly flatter again but um that's okay um like i said you can you can sculpt a lot with this so that is now my little bowl it's um yeah it is definitely slightly slightly curved um and i filled it with a little bit of um the white wool so the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to make a head for the hedgehog taking a good pinch of this white wool and now i'm going to roll this into i uh, don't think it tells you specifically how to do it in the book so again i'm i'm gonna um so pre-felt an egg shape with a pointy end using most of the remainder of the white wool leaving two generous pinches for the ears fastened into the bowl with the pointy end nose sticking out in shape a little more so that the forehead runs at a slope towards the nose. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to roll this shape now into an egg shape, which is really easy to do because that's how most shapes turn out when you start rolling up wool. Remember, I'm going from one end to the other, rolling it up and then once the wispy ends are folded over, the shape i'm going to stub them down into place now because i know that one end needs to be pointy one end needs to be round i'm going to look at my shape and and wonder if there's already a, a side that looks more round and the other one one more pointy i think this looks more pointy this looks more round so i'm going to make that the back of the head now by making it um rounder and fatter stabbing into it um, the lanolin rich core wool, for those of you who have used it before, you will know that it's extremely responsive to stabbing with a needle. It really, really wants to be felted down very quickly and it's working beautifully. Just a few stabs and you've got a nice, um, a nice solid um, shape here already. And then the other end, I'm going to make a little bit more pointy. So I'm stabbing the needle more in a star shape towards the a pointier nose once i've done this because i don't want it to be like a mousy look once i've got that far i am now stabbing alongside it so that um, i maintain the pointy um, look but not that pointy so that's going to be the head that's going to be the nose there right at the front and what you can do is because it's going to sit in your shell like that you can sort of hold it inside and see if that kind of uh, matches your expectation of, of the shape um, I think that's not a bad shape actually so I'm going to stick with that rather than adding more wool or stabbing it lots smaller if you are doing this um, and, and the head is in proportion way too small, then just add more wool around it. If it's too big, then just keep stabbing it and make it smaller. I'm just firming it up now without changing the size too much. Right, so now I need to uh, fasten this into it. Um, and um, uh, I fasten it into it by stabbing in into the shape itself and into the uh, base. And um, I'm not at all in the slightest bit worried whether this wool will um, 
point through to the other side. So if you get like white little prickles coming out, don't worry about it. All of that will be covered with um, the tops in part two of our tutorial. There we go. And um, remember, you can get yourself a £15 voucher if you're watching this live today on the 3rd of May 2020. And you can um, comment here on YouTube and tell us your encounters with hedgehogs. So I'm just now fastening that head properly into the bowl by um, also fastening the um, the top part into it already. So now it's it's kind of there. Um, I've got to attach the ears yet, so I don't want to fasten it on too much, but certainly the top of it is, um, is fine. Um, now you're going to add the nose and the eyes. For the nose, you need a little bit of black, just a pinch, tiny wisp even. And all I'm going to do is, um, I just, uh, um, what does it actually say? The size of a large pea. Well, this is a slightly smaller hedgehog, so I'm going to just felt that very gently onto the tip of his nose by stabbing into it. Hedgehogs have got ginormous noses in comparison to their body. They're, and they look like dog noses, so they're quite quite um, distinct looking. I'm not going to go into details of that kind here, obviously. Now, when the nose is on, you might find that it uh, makes, makes the head look a bit wonky, so just compensate by stabbing into the white again. You could also give it a bit of an upturned um, shape where I'm pinching with my finger now. You can stab with your needle so that you get a slightly pointy nose going up. It gives it a cute look that's not mentioned in my book. Okay. So the next thing is that you are going to put the eyes in. Now, before you add the eyes, I think it's always good to make indentations where the eyes will be going. Of course, you can use our glue in eyes. There's nothing stopping you, but we thought it might be nice to just do a project where, the, where everything is needle felted and no um, extra eyes. Um, are added. No, um, the eyes that we sell, which work perfectly well, are our glue-in eyes. But just putting the shape in where the eyes are going to go um, gives you an idea of the um, proportions of the head, and and now you also know exactly where to put the eyes. And if it um, because it's in symmetry to the rest of the face, and you don't have to sort of pull the black off again in case you you put it in the wrong place. And then all you're going to do is add a little bit of black into the um, little hollow that you've made. So just stab that in. So you've got a little a little round disc there. Do this on the other side. When we use our glue in eyes, uh, one of the reasons why we love using them is because um, they instantly put a twinkle um, into the eye, like a reflection point, basically. So if you are needle felting the eyes, you may need to put a tiny little bit of white into, into the eye as well. And to do this, just take off the tiniest wisp of wool that you can manage. It's so small, you can, can probably not even see it. Twist it into a tiny little dot. There. And then just put it onto the eye. It looks weird while you're doing it because you'd, all you can see is that white mark. But when once it's on and you, you don't look at it for a minute and then um, look at it again, it just looks automatically like a tiny little reflection point. So it's quite a useful um, tip on how to needle felt the eyes. Do that on the other side as well. It's a fine balance to have that not too big, um, but also not too small, so you just push it straight through the eye. Um, so, yeah, it's a fine balance to do. So there you go. That's my little hedgehog now. Um, he's got his eyes. And um, and then you can put a tiny little mouth there, which you could make in pink or you can make it in beige, whatever. But um, you can just literally fold a tiny bit of wool. I've actually made it in beige in this one there. Um, and put it underneath his nose. It's almost like you're... Um, giving the, the mouth the feature more by stabbing a, a, a line into it rather than coloring it in. So he's got a little a little smiley mouth now and um, and that's all I'm going to do 
on here now. I think later on we add features into the face, like a little bit of uh, smudges of, of, of beige to make him look less white. But for now, um, what I want to do is, is the ears. So for the ears, um, with the two pinches of white wool set aside, let's say I had that set aside. There we go. Two pinches of white wool. Similar size pinches is always good. Um, that one looks a bit smaller. And um, all you're going to do now is on your felting mat, you are now going to, and what I do is I hold on to one end because one side will remain wispy. Sorry about the state of my mat. I really need to clean it. I don't even know where my super duper cleaning brush is. But um, anyway, you're just going to have to put up with it looking a little bit messy. Maybe I can turn it around. Oh, that doesn't look much better. Maybe a little bit better. So what I do is I hold on to the wispy ends like this, and then um, that's a good a good way to keep your fingers out of the way. Then I stab into the middle of the wisps at the other end that I'm not holding on, and then you can fold the fibers over to make that ear shape. Again, as you're stabbing flat onto the mat, you're going to have to lift this off and then keep shaping the ear on your mat into a... A little uh, round disc almost like a, a fingernail shape now my because my mat is dirty it's picked up some of the other fibers but I'm not too upset about it because I've got to put beige into the middle anyway um, the reason why you're holding on to these wispy ends is because these are going to be the bits that help the ear fa get fastened onto the head so make one ear first that's what I always um, recommend make one and then make the other straight away after and um, does it say cover the inside of the ears with tiny wisps of light beige? Um, so I'm going to do that now. There. Um, so it's like tiny little um, patch of beige inside. And you do start this from both sides. There we go. One ear ready. And now I'm going to make the second in exactly the same way holding on to one end, stabbing the other end, folding the fibers inward, trying to aim for the same size as the other ear. That's always useful. It's always better to work with little and then add more if necessary rather than using lots of wool and then you've got to um, somehow maybe even cut it off or tear it off or start over. When you start with little, you can always add to it and um, you've got more flexibility to put things right and make it more the way you want it. And then a tiny bit of beige inside the ear. Ear number two, complete. Right, so one ear, two ears, both um, done. And they're ready to be attached to the uh, little hoglet. I'll do that in a minute. Let's just uh, check in with uh, what's going on here in the group. Oh, we have a lady a few miles away from me that rescues hedgehogs. I was lucky to visit her and see babies from a day old upwards and once in her hospital in her garden. Not babies, hoglets. Um, I went to a, hes a, a hescue, a hedgehog rescue. I tried to um, make um, two words into one um, many years ago. And oh my goodness, I think I was mostly left with a, the with a fact of what state those hedgehogs come to her. There were maggot infested and flea infested and she had them all in her house like her sitting room um was the the, the sort of intensive care unit where there were hedgehogs with um cut off legs from the lawnmower and that she was trying to um to um well to rescue basically so i think you've got to be a real he hedgehog fanatic and lover to be able to run a hedgehog hospital but of course it's lovely to do that so definitely um Look out for your hedgehogs in your garden. There are lots of useful tips. You can leave some water out if they're thirsty. You can leave some food out for them. I think they like cat food the most. Um, you can also keep um, make sure that they can get in and out of your garden. So keep a hole in the hedge or uh, don't don't wall yourself into concrete. You definitely um, either you trap the hedgehogs or or um, or you won't have any coming in. So make sure that they can uh, rummage around and snuffle about. And um, uh, if you've got any other hedgehog um, tips, let us know. And I'm just wondering if anybody um, 
guessed what a, a group of hedgehogs is called. So many, oh my goodness, there's so many comments here. Um, anyway, if you if you've had a go at guessing it and um, you um, maybe you got it, maybe you didn't get it. I can't see now. But a group of hedgehogs is called a prickle of hedgehogs, which I think is so sweet. Um, oh, yes, um, Catherine got that on an um, array of hedgehogs. I like prickle better. Oh, yes, lots of you got it. Uh, Gina said, um, oh, I like Sandra saying a huggle of hockeys. That sounds really nice. Um, what about um, Fiona says a horde of hoglets. That sounds nice, too. It sounds like a horde of children. Um, uh, so, yes, if you guess prickle or um, array, um, is, am I pronouncing this right? Maybe I'm getting that wrong. That's probably why I like hoggle, um, prickle much better. Um, oh. Years ago, my dog tried eating a hedgehog. It wasn't nice. No, that that is not nice. Um, love, love, love. The Hoggy family was a super Advent project. Oh, thank you. Um, um, I really loved it too. The whole story, the build up to it. It was just so nice. Um, for those of you who don't know what we're talking about, um, not last year, but the year before, we started doing Advent projects. And um, the Advent projects were... Um, where you made something every week. Uh, last year it was the um, animal in the wood wall hanging, and the year before it was a three D uh, make to make the ho the ho McHoggy family, which consisted out of Homer McHoggy and then um, Heather his wife, and then they had um, two children initially, Holly and um, Huey, and then they had a baby baby as well, uh, which was the Christmas uh, surprise. So yes, I really enjoyed that too. We occasionally sell it as a pack. But um, uh, you you should definitely get it as a, a set of instructions, and then you can make up um, make them up as well. Right. What else can I tell you today? So yesterday we had the unwrapping of our makers boxes. I've got the owl still sitting here. He's um he's looking he's he's literally looking down what I'm doing. So he's watching. Uh, nothing for you to eat, little hoglets. I guess they would eat them, and um. And I forgot yesterday to tell you that you can uh, join Alicia um, for free. She does this. She does this because she loves doing it. Um, you can join her to make um, a maker's box together. You can join her um, to find out what you might want to make from the surprise box. And then there's also um, what they call, I think they call it a gub and stub or a bug, uh, um, stub and gub. Anyway, it's here. Gavin stuff. I uh, that's it. So the little owl zoom alongs actually on Sunday, uh, coming up now at two p.m. The surprise box zoom along is on ten at ten thirty on Saturday the twenty first of March, and the Gavin stuff zoom along on the twenty second of May. Sorry, did I say March? I meant May. 21st and 22nd, two in a row. And um, to to get your invitation to the Zoom, you um, best join our Every Wanna Make a Facebook uh, group. Uh, but you can also email Alicia and her email address is marketing at the makers with double s dot co dot uk. And she will email you the link as well if you are not on Facebook and um, if you want to come. This is not just for people who get the su uh, su subscription boxes. This is also for people who want to find out about the subscription boxes. And certainly the Gab and Stab Zoom Along is for anybody who um, who wants to while the time away. Um, stabbing wool and um, meeting like-minded people via Zoom. Um, that sounded a bit like a, um, a dating um, um, matching um, thing, but it's nothing like that. It's just it's just really a friendly group that uh, welcomes anybody and everybody who loves fluff, basically. Um, Jane's has sadly not seen a hedgehog in our garden for years, but they are beautiful little creatures. They certainly are. And they make so much noise eating. Somebody should teach them some manners. Um, I need to wet felt some flowers to finish my larger project. Aha. Uh -huh. A vampire venom says, haven't seen a wild hedgehog. Oh, no. So, oh, yes. Have we, have we resolved this thing about the hedgehog that I've never seen that isn't a hedgehog, but it's related to ele elephants? Was that it? Or was that something else entirely? <laughs> yeah, I can just Im imagine one of our cats doing that to, to Catherine. You leave food out for the hedgehog <laughs> and the cat eats it. When our cat's already fat, well, one of them is anyway. Um, 
Alex said, where we stayed at Wonder Woman, my daughter took the dog out for her last walk and came back full of uh, the full of the amount of hedgehogs she had just seen, was amazed at the size of them and the noise they made, that's it. Exactly, the noise they make. They're not exactly quiet visitors of the garden. Um, oh, the, high, the wildlife highway, says Lorna. I like that expression. Um, she leaves she leaves uh, gaps um, so, that she, so it becomes a wildlife highway. I like that, excellent. Um, Okay. Oh, somebody said a group, um, or oh, you probably meant a, a prickle. Gina says a, a group of hedgehogs is called a pickle, but it's actually a prickle. Um, I'm sure you meant prickle. Um, okay, I'm, I'm literally uh, s skipping in and out um, of the comments here. Uh, Donna says, first saw hedgehogs, a uh, hedgehog as a child. Dad brought it to me to look at. I took it in my hands, tried to hug it. Oh, to my tummy. Not the best idea as I was wearing a thin summer top. Hedgehog curled up. Was prickly. Of course it was. Um, Michelle says, I have a lovely little hedgehog in my garden. I may, I have made a little hedgehog highway under my fence and bought him um, a hedgehog house. I love watching. What's a hedgehog highway? Oh, yes, you, you let him get in and out. That's it. Same as a wildlife highway. Sorry, had a dim moment there. Um, um, many years ago, I was going into the office and spotted a young hedgehog in the road, headed for a busy dual carriageway. No! So I picked him up and put him in the front garden, pointed the other way. I hope you got the message. <laughs> That's not good. We see way too many flat hedgehogs by the side of the road. Right, I'm going to attach the ears now to um, the hedgehog. So I've got my two little ears with wispy ends. And all I'm going to do now is I'm going to... Um, fasten those wispy ends into the hedgehog's head. Um, you can spread them out sort of to go in all directions. They definitely need to sit on the side of the head. So I'm felting them down. And um, at the same time, you can also, if, if they're really large, you can reduce the size a little bit if you want to. But the main thing is that they are sort of slightly curved, pointing forward. Um, that is the idea. There you go. He's got a little ear attached now. And then you do this on the other side. Um, hedgehogs, the, the, the hedgehogs you see in our garden, wildlife, they're not actually uh, white. They're more sort of brown. Um, but um, I just love love this, this version of the hedgehog, which is probably the one that's related to an elephant. I still haven't found out that. I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look that up. Okay, here we go. Second ear attached. So I've got two ears now. Got the hedgehog with a head, no body yet, but um, that will follow. Right, so um, what happens next? Um, I feel I need to fill in more of, of this. So I've done the ears, hands and feet. That's the last bit, what we're doing. Nose, eyes, mouth, done that. Um, I, don't, I can't see it in the book because I haven't read it. Um, I feel we need to put some more in here. So I'm going to add a little bit more of the white or the lanolin rich um, core wool in here to give him a body. Otherwise he looks like he hasn't got one. But the main thing that we're going to do now is we're sort of felting the outer shell more onto him. So you can, um, you can pull this down his head a bit felt it on and this is what I meant don't worry too much about making it a bowl shape because it does turn into um, more of an outer cover by felting it onto him and um, so of course make sure that you're not flattening the ears like I've done on one side so you might have to felt that brown shell down a little bit so now you're basically fitting the shell onto the hedgehog whereas before it was um, sort of roughly in, um, surrounding it and um, and then felt into the body. The lanolin rich core wool can often have some VM in it that's short for vegetable matter. You can if it bothers you pull it out it usually works its way up as you're stabbing into the wool. So that's it really. There we go. Just turn that around. Remember, we've got a special offer on, on uh, wools and tools, 
time to stock up, time to get what you've always wanted, time to um, get some, maybe you're already getting ready for um, making gifts for later on this year. Now is the time to stock up on, um, on wool that you might need, fibers and, um, and um, other um, felting materials like I don't know, it doesn't always have to be wool. It could also be the rummy, rummy tops. I think they're all included, I'm pretty certain. Um, Alicia will put me right if I'm talking hogwash. <laughs> and, um, and of course, uh, felting tools. That includes the needles, that includes the, um, um, the, the needles and the needles, earth mats, eco wool mats, brush mats, um, anything that falls under tools, anything that you need to um, to for needle felting, that's all classed as tools. Um, so um, have a look, put three items in your basket and at the checkout you will see that it automatically gives you the cheapest item free. Right, so there's my little, uh, he's definitely a lot smaller than this one, he's like the little brother. Um, so what I'm going to show you next is um, how to make the um, arms and legs and um, I make one each and then the other one uh, you can do as a as homework but I will also um, just show you that um, the, the way to decorate his little face is by using tiny amounts of the beige and you can sort of put him a little almost like little bags under his eyes they have got quite a distinct patterning hedgehogs in their faces but we are just stylizing this um, entirely so we're putting little a little round um, semi curved shape under his eyes just for a little bit of um, a feature. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. Um, just felting that down a bit more. I really like it when they've got um, a slightly bald heads at the top so when the when the when we put the prickles on we make sure we keep keep it sort of slightly away from his head. You can also give him sleepy eyes. So um, to make sleepy eyes, you would just do a little a little curved um, slit. Um, it's like he's fast asleep. We've done uh, hedgehogs like that before as well. And um, I'm just felting down that head a little bit because it still, it suddenly looks a little bit big in proportion to the rest of the body. Felting that down a bit. I'm definitely keeping that um, nose slightly upturned because I think that looks quite cute. And of course, remember, once you put the uh, the prickles on at the back, it will become a lot bigger. So you know, it might have it might have been almost that size before. It's not actually that far. But as soon as you put all this extra wool on the back, it will look a lot bigger. So at the moment, you might think, oh my goodness, he's just like a little wormy thing. But it's not going to stay like that. So I'm going to show you now how to make the hands and the feet. So you need um, equal parts for the hands first. So just take um, a pinch or a little, well, it's more of a wisp of the wool. And as with the ears, you're going to hold on to one end and felt the rest flat, turning the wool in. And you're going to make a really nice solid flat part here of, of the wool. So don't stab too deep stab so that the wool felts together rather you stabbing everything into the felting mat. Um, what works really well when you do this is to turn your felting mat round, oh my goodness that's, and use the slightly firmer side. It, it stops the fibers getting pushed so much into the mat and keeps them more where they need to be which is the actual shape that you're trying to achieve and you're going to make that into a nice solid little disc. So you've got these bits that you're holding on to, but the rest you're felting down really nice and solid. I feel a bit bad that I've got such a dirty felting mud and I can't find my magic brush. But um, anyway, um, go to the edge here so you can see it better. There we go. Of course, all of the things that um, we, we sell on, on um, to you, we also use all the time. So there's no surprise that they look used. We don't get a new felting mat out every time I do a live stream. Um, that would be um, very wasteful indeed. And these felting mats, they last and last and last and last. And what I've done in the past is when the top gets a little bit worn, then I just put another top on top 
um, the base, I've, I will be honest to say, the slightly firmer base, I've not managed to at all um, destroy. So it seems to be um, the case that this, this firmer base is definitely um, more um, robust than the soft top. But then I use the soft top more. So I've now I've got a nice little uh, disc here. And I'm going to make another one um, later on. But I'm just going to show you that you're going to cut into it one, once twice for fingers there so you've got you've got the fingers um spread out here you can even shape them more with your scissors these scissors are brilliant sell them little rainbow scissors they're very sharp and um all you're going to do now is you're going to add a little bit of beige whatever beige you're using whether that's the mountain sheep beige i'm using the alpaca mix beige here and put that in the middle um, in the center and in the process you're trying to sort of curve the hands in a little bit so as you're stabbing it in the middle the fingers will curl up and um, you can only do this if you've stabbed this really solidly the cutting in so you've got a little hand that's sort of slightly curved and that little hand will be attached here so that he's got like little a little um, oversized hand by the side of his body as he has here now um, so that's the hand, and now I'm going to show you how to do the foot. So these two items you are going to do at home yourself. Um, so I've got my second wisp here, which I'm going to turn into another hand. Now you need equal sized, um, slightly larger pieces for the feet. Now the feet, I um, the way that I'm doing them, I roll this into a sausage, into a, sort of a, a sausage shape like that. I'm leaving some wispy ends, so I'm not felt, I'm not closing that sausage shape up, and now I'm felting this already into um, that shape. So now I have got literally a sausage attached to some wispy ends. And what I need to do now is because I want I want to keep those wispy ends, but I also need to make um, a um, a heel. So I'm felting. So that the wispy ends are now in the center of that shape rather than at the back. So what, what I've got now is is um is a little sausage still with the wispy ends, but at the back here, this is going to be the heel, this is going to be the toe, and I have got my um, wispy ends here at the top now. So I felted it down a little bit at the heel. I'm going to show you that again in a minute because that might have gone a little bit fast. So you are, you're trying to make a foot with an, an extension on it, which is the wispy ends. And these get attached to the hoglet so that the sole of the foot looks up at you. And um, you can shape that foot, if you're making a larger one, um, by, by stabbing into the side so that you've got a more narrow heel than and a broader front of the foot. And you're felting the, the front of the foot down really well as well because you're going to cut into there to make the toy, toes again. Now, this foot is quite small. So to make it bigger, if you need to make it bigger, like I am now, you're just going to add more to the front of the foot. I'm just going to wrap that around it to make it slightly bigger. And um, I've still got my wispy ends sticking up. Don't want to lose them. And then now I'm just going to stab this down really well because, again, I'm going to have to cut into it with my scissors in a minute. So the foot can be quite broad at the front. Stab it from the back as well. And it actually t shows it quite nicely here. If you look at this, this is the foot shape. So I'm that's where I'm heading with this. So I've got my foot here with the wispy ends here at the top. That is um, exactly what I'm trying to do. And I, but I will show you this again because it might be a little bit hard to, um, to follow that. Um, but first of all, I'm going to felt this down really well. They can be quite broad, the feet at the front or the toes at the front, which mine aren't. So I'm going to add even a little bit more. This is what I'm saying. It's always better to um, start with little and then add more than have too much. And then you, you need to somehow get rid of it. So it's always better to have a little bit less and then add more. And then you've got way more control over sizing and shaping. 
and again stab the needle only as deep as you need to to secure this particular shape rather than stabbing right into the mat. So I'm going to use my scissors again. Cut into one and cut further back this time. So now I've made um, three little toes here. There. Felt that down a bit more. The top of the foot is unimportant because you will only see the bottom of the foot and because you will see the bottom of the foot we're going to add a little bit of grey, uh, not grey, beige into it just to make them a little bit dirty looking. So now you have got um, three little toes um, and the underneath of the foot that looks like he's been walking on it already. There you go. And that will then get attached to your little hocklet like that. So he's going to have his feet um, like they're sticking up into the air like here. So I'm going to show you one more time how to make that foot. And um, and whilst I'm doing that, um, Alicia can um, pick a winner. So the way I've done it, I've, I've rolled up some wool into a sausage shape. But I haven't closed the sausage shape by stabbing, sorry, by um, wrapping the wool all the way around it. I have closed it by stabbing into the shape before I've before I've rolled the wool up around it. And then you um, basically just maintain that, that wispy wool at the top. So that's still here, that wisp right at the top. And then you're going to make sure that you make a heel. So you have to stab into the heel from the top a little bit. Okay, we have got two winners um, here today on the 3rd of May 2022 and um, one is uh, Marion. Well done Marion. And also the other one is Susan S. And I think it's S. S for sugar. Um, I'm just trying to... Um, I know Marion. That's Marion H, no doubt. And um, Susan... Susan... Just trying to find a Susan. Sorry, I'm going over the camera with my head. I can see the top of my head. Apologies for that. Okay, I'm going to go on the big screen because there's nothing happening for you right now. Um, so I'm just going to have a look. Um, I'm pretty certain it's Susan Susan S for sugar. And Marion. Oh, Susan F. Susan F for Freddy. Okay, okay. Excellent. There's no Susan S. Um, Susan F. Um, Perfect. It's it's just that I couldn't hear whether um, Alicia said F or S. Um, anyway, um, that's um, my foot still happening here. Well done, ladies. Uh, just drop us an email. Tell us that you have won today and um, we will um, send you the um, discount voucher via email. Um, and then it's basically a code that you can use at your leisure. It doesn't expire. It doesn't run out. Um, and um, hopefully you will find something nice. I will, should also just mention that you can only ever use one discount code at a time when you buy from us. And that is because the system doesn't allow two codes. That's with most companies is the same. It's it's how, how these um, apps work. You can only use one code. So if you are um, wanting to buy your um, tool and wool combination you can't use the 15 pound code or any other code if if you are getting that um, actually I don't know if that is true because you don't have to put a code in it does it automatically so on this occasion you might be able to do that and and get uh, use your 15 pound um, voucher yeah anyway just ignore everything I've just said I think it does work um, to, because you're not actually phys physically putting two codes in, in. But in general, you um, you only get um, get to use one code. Right, there's my second foot. Um, if you can make arm, um, arms and feet for the next time, uh, uh, then we will attach those and um, I show you how to give your hedgehogs his little uh, spiky prickles. 
Um, I hope you've enjoyed today. I'm just going to double check what else I, I need to tell you. Oh yes, next live streams, just so that you've got it right in front of you. You've got part two of the Hocklet, of course, and then we're doing the Queen Bee Fairy from our fairy box from our May fairy box to be more specific and then we're going to make a magnificent peacock bird. I love this one, you will love this one. Uh, we do have that as a kit format so please get it now if you want to um, make along. It has got very specific fibers in there which you might not have. Um, so do do get the um, peacock um, small needle felting kit. It's definitely a, a good buy and you'll love making the project. Um, just letting you also know that um, we have got a few new exciting wool mixes which qualify for the promotion that we're running at the moment. So we have got four shades of wool bats. Um, these are four colours of a particular shade, so four colours of green, four colours of pink, four colours of red and so on. And uh, you get uh, 60 grams in a, in a bag, so 15 grams of each colour of wool. We are still raising funds for the Ukraine. Um, get your needle felting pack to make um, a small um, pendant. It is, I call it a pendant because it's small enough if you wanted to wear it around your neck you could but you can of course also use it as a wool decoration. Um, oh yes, let's mention the fairy bundle. I don't know if we've got any in stock still to be honest but we have got two types of uh, fairy decorations at the moment um, for you to use with making your own fairies there is over 150 single items in each fairy bundle so plenty of things to decorate your fairies with um, it's always great to get these things all in one go and then you don't have to buy hundreds and thousands of everything um, individually as well and um, and of course we can't um, tell you often enough that we are still um, promoting the PKD charity to make your party mouse so you can purchase your kit uh, by visit visiting the PKD website um, and PKD stands for polycystic um, kidney disease and that is a charity you can find it quite easily and get your mouse kit from there party mouse kit from there and then we'll do that together on the 18th of May you will get an exclusive invitation to a Facebook group um, which um, will lead you to where the live stream is happening. So please do that. And uh, what else can I say? Um, I think, oh yes, and of course there is the Jubilee mouse as well, which um, I don't have on my um, um, on my thumbnails here anymore. But um, the Jubilee mouse is still up for grabs uh, from our website and um, it makes, makes a, a mouse with a beautiful little uh, Union Jack waistcoat. Right. That's all I've got to say. Only half a hedgehog finished uh, today, but uh, we will pick that up next week and make him whole into one of these. So um, hopefully you can join us on Thursday evening at 7 p.m. if you missed this today. Hello to all of those who are joining us then or have joined us as we're now at the end. And well done to winning your £15 gift voucher. That's all from me uh, for now. Take care, everybody, and um, get those, give those little hedgehogs a special treat tonight as it's Hedgehog Awareness Week. Bye.